Hey, welcome back to another wonderful episode of Miss Phonics and Polly. Um, we're here with me is Divine. Divine, how are you? Good, Miss Phonics. Welcome. All right, so welcome, my viewers. Remember, in our last episode, we talked about simile. We also talked about the all vowel sounds. We talked, we, we chipped into the vowel sound and we said the first set of vowel sound we we're going to be treating are the short and the long e sound. So we, we said the short sound e and the long one e. Okay? The short sound e, the long sound e. I told you then that you don't get deceived by the words that you see and pronounce it the way it, it, it's spelled. No. You have to learn the standard pronunciation for each of these words. We talked about women. Women. You don't say women. No. It's pronounced women. So it has a short sound. Both at the we and the mean. Women. Women. We also talked about the word market. So I want to go to the market to get some items. Okay. I want to buy some items. What do you buy? What do you do in the market you buy? So market, okay? We have the short E at the end part of E. And we also talked about the days of the week. We talked about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the short E for you. There are several other words that you won't believe contain the short E sound, and they actually do. Today, we're going to touch the long E sound. The long E sound, okay? On the, sh talking about the short one, um, there are some words that actually, even in the spelling, you see letter A. But the sound you get there is the sound E. Look at the word, village, village. You don't say village, you say what? Village. Mm -hmm. So, such words are also short sound. So, we're back to the letter E sound. The long E sound. Um, words like the word spelled P-O-L-I-C-E. P-O-L-I-C-E. Normally, you call that Police. No. It's called please. 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 Can you sound that? Please. Good. You have the long E sound in such word. There's another word. We 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 can Q U A Y. Normally you see such word, you might be tempted to say K. No. It's pronounced key, key. The same way the key you use, you use in opening a door is pronounced K-E-Y, key. That's the same way you pronounce the word, the, the word spelled Q-U-A-Y, key. Okay, are we together? So you say E. Divine? E. Sound good. Let's take it again. E. Divine. E. Good. So that's the long E sound. And we have our words, as we have just pronounced, the long E sound. Okay? We're using the progressive phonics. Basic three progressive phonics to learn this. And um, we have many other words. Like C. Um, there's a word, amoeba. Most people call it amoeba. I actually don't know the set of language that started that amoeba. It's actually a bit funny, but the correct pronunciation for that is amoeba. Um, divine. We touched some of these sounds some time ago. Do you remember some other words that 
fall under the category of the E sum. Can you help me refresh my memory? E sum. Mm. Any other word that comes that we have treated, transcribed and treated that falls under the long E sum. Can you remember any? Mm. Okay, fine. No problem. So, like we said, we have the key, we have seeds. So, if you look at the short E sum, you notice that there's letter I. But if you look at the long E sum, you see words that have E, 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 A, I, E, like I sit on a seat. Okay, you see the difference? I sit on a seat. So I sit, the verb sit is S-I-T. That's a short sum. So most work, pick, P-I-C-K, they are the fall under the short E sum. Mm? So I just said pick, P-I-C-K, but the long E, you see, P-E-A-K, K, peak, that's the peak of an event, the height, the highest um, point is what we refer to as peak. Mm. Are we together? So that's that. Um, that very sound is not really a pro problematic sound in English for local speakers of English. And I'm going to pick one of the problematic sounds. When I say problematic sound, I mean a sound that most native speakers of um, Nigerian speakers of English language pronounce those words very wrongly. And that takes us to the sound, ah. It's written like upside down V, letter V, written the upside down V. That sound is pronounced, ah. Can you repeat me, um, after me, divine? Ah, ah, okay, ah, ah. It's a very short sound. So, most times you don't stress on it. You know, our short sounds, we use shorter period, um, seconds to pronounce them. Fewer seconds to pronounce the short sound. So the short sound, ah. Most times you have letter U in between two consonant sounds. For instance, we can have B, U, T. We can have C, U, T. We can have C, U, P. I just gave three spellings of words, three words. I spell three words now. B, U, T, C, U, T, C, U, P. So, audience, can you pronounce B, U, T? I can hear somebody saying but. No, that's not the way to pronounce it. You say but. Because we are treating the sound ah, so you say but. Mm -hmm. What did I say, Divan? But. But. Uh, then you say C U T. I'm sure you will give me the correct pronunciation for C U T, knowing what B U T sounds like. Divine, can I have you pronounce C U T? C U T. Cut. Cut. So you cut it off. You cut it off. Don't say cut it. Help me cut it. No. Cut it. Cut. Okay, do you get that? Fine. We also have C U P. So with the same sound in B U T and C U T, let's have C U P. So audience, C U P is what? Good. So divine. Let me have you pronounce C U P. C U P. Cup. Cup. Good. Cup. So I could just ask for a cup of water. Cup of water. Mm, not cup of water. So my young learners, don't say I need a cup of water anymore. You say I need a cup of water. So say cup of water. Cup of water. Give me a cup of water. Good. Divine. Can you repeat? Give me a cup of water. Request. Make a request of me. Give me a cup of water. Good. A cup of water. Now, you might be tempted to ask me if C-U-P is cup. 
Then what is CAP? So, how do we say CAP? How do we say CAC? When we say CUT is cat, CAT is what? Audience, give it a try. Although CAT is a different sound entirely, but well, the CAT is a different sound which will be shown on our screen here. Mm -hmm. The sound there is eh. Eh. It's another short sound. Eh. Can you repeat? Eh. Eh. So we have cat. We pronounce it as cat. Cat. C A P is cat. C U P is cap. Mm -hmm. So we are not on that sound right now. We are still on the um ah sound. So let's have more words, um, examples before we go on our short break. Let's go on more word examples for ah. We have talked about words that have letter U in between two consonant sounds, having the ah sound. A dog. We're going to look at words that have O, letter O in between them. We're going to be sampling with short words like this. Okay? So, we have S-O-N. S-O-N has the same sound. Son. Oh, I have one son and two daughters. I have one son, two daughters. So, son. Don't say son. Oh, my son. Oh, my son. No, it's not son. It's sun. So, audience, S O N is sun. Okay, repeat that. S O N, sun. Divine, can you help me repeat it that? S O N, sun. Good, absolutely correct. All right, we have other words. In my sentence, I said other words. So, let's make use of the word other. O T H E R, other. Mm? You don't say other, the other one. No, the other one. No, other, other, the other one. Other. Okay? O T H E R, other. Are we there? Can you repeat that for me? O T H E R, other. Good. O T H E R, other. Mm. So, we have come, C-O-M-E. We still have the letter O there. It's giving us come. Come here. Don't say come here. Mm, okay? Don't say come here. No. You say what? Come here. Come here. So, did we get that? Come. C-O-M-E. Come. Can you repeat that after me? C O N E come. Divine, can you repeat that? C O N E come. Come. Good. Come here. Okay. We have S O M E some. Okay. Some oranges. Mm -hmm. Some. Not some. Some. No. We have done. D O N E. What have you done? Oh, what have you done? Done. Done. D-O-N-E. Done. Okay? D-O. Audience. D-O-N-E. Done. So, Divine, can you help repeat that? D-O-N-E. Done. Done. What have you done? What have you done? Don't say what have you done. <laughs> okay, so let's pronounce our words standardly. Okay, so that when you're talking to a white lady, um, she will not misconcept what you're saying. Okay, so we're going to be going for a short break and we'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back to Miss Phoenix and Polly. I told you, all work and no play makes Miss Phoenix a dull woman. I don't want to be dull. Do you want to be dull? So let's play a little. Listen up. Mommy, Daddy, you can play as well. Uh -huh. So let's go. Um, Piggy on the railway. Piggy had stood. Along came an engine and broke Piggy's leg. Oh, said Piggy, that's not fair. Oh, said the engine driver, I don't care. <laughs> this particular, it makes me remember little kids. Some of them, they don't care whether they hurt you or they don't hurt you. While some are just on the soft part of it. So you can see the case of Piggy on the railway and the engine driver that doesn't care. Eh? So Piggy on the railway, Piggy had to. Along came an engine and broke Piggy's leg. Oh, said Piggy, that's not fair. Oh, said the engine driver, I don't care. <laughs> so can we recite it together? Um, Divine, let's do it together. Let's play a little. So you say, Piggy on the railway. Piggy on the railway. Piggy had stood. Piggy had stood. Along came an engine. Along came an engine. And broke Piggy's leg. And broke Piggy's leg. Oh, said Piggy. Oh, said Piggy. That's not fair. That's not fair. Oh, said the engine driver. Oh, said the engine driver. I don't care. I don't care. We talked about the ah song. That's the upside down way. I'm sure you found a lot of words that you have been mispronouncing all the while. Mm -hmm. So try not to make the mistake of pronouncing them wrongly anymore. You have learned now. So that should make the difference. Okay. We are going to touch a bit of the sound. Er, that's the long E eh sound. <clears throat> we have the short E eh sound. Your tongue is flat. E. Eh. And we have the long er sound. The middle of your tongue is a bit lifted up to give you the sound er. So let's say er. Repeat after me again. Er. So divine, repeat. Er. Err. Good. That's the sound. And we have words that contain this sound. The word, I just said words. Words. Okay, not words. Mm -hmm. You don't say the word. The word e um, egg or the word ball. No, it's not word. You don't say word. You don't say word. You say word. Word. Okay? W O R D word okay then you can have words like G I R L so let me take it from word W O R D word say word good divine say W O R D word W O R D word. Good. G I R L girl. G I R L girl. S K I R T. We have skirt. So repeat after me. S K I R T. Divine. S K I R T skirt. S K I R T skirt. So we have S K I R T skirt W O R K work don't say work don't say I want to go to work no I have to go to work my work I have to do my work home work work not home work okay don't say home work you say home work work okay work W O R K Work. Are we good? 
All right. So at this juncture, I want to quickly chip in uh, figures of speech. Let's touch figures of speech. You know, in our previous ep episode, we touched um, simile. So right now, we are going to talk about metaphor. Metaphor, unlike simile, that compares two things. Metaphor also compares two things together. So the comparison of two um, things that are in two different class. Mm, they are not related by class. When you compare them together, calling one as if it's the other. That's direct comparison. Not like um, the case of simile where you say um, divine is as calm as a dove. In the case of um, metaphor, you don't put as. You don't put like. You call a one as though it is the other. For instance, I say, divine is a dove. That's metaphor. Divine is a dove. Mm -hmm. So that's metaphor. Okay? You call it, John is a tiger. Oh, Moses is a snake. A slimy snake. You know, that is metaphor. Direct. You call one direct as though it's another. There are different forms of metaphor, but we're not going too deep into that. We also have another figure of speech, hyperbole. Hyperbole? But before we go to hyperbole, I'd like to be sure that you understand what I mean by metaphor. Can you give me an example or a sentence that is metaphoric? Um, divine? Make a sentence that is metaphor in nature. You call one thing the other. Make sure the two things are not in the same class. For instance, if you are comparing um, divine to a dove, you are not saying divine is Mary. Because divine is a, is a female, is a human being. And Mary is a human being. That will not give us metaphor. Whatever you are comparing must be in two different classes. Or category. You understand? So, divine, give it a try. Let's see. An example of a metaphor is she is a green snake in the green grass. Wow. She's a green snake in a green grass. That's a typical example of metaphor. Yes. You call one thing as though it's the other. Okay. So, let's talk about hyperbole. Hyperbole is an exaggerated form of saying something just for the effect. What you state actually is almost or even impossible. Overstatement. When a statement is exaggerated, then you have hyperbole. For instance, you say, oh, I'm so hungry. I could finish a mountain of pandidian. Nobody can finish a mountain of pandidian. Mm. So we can easily classify that as hyperbole. Mm. Don't forget, it's not hyperbole, it's hyperbole. That's the correct pronunciation for that, hyperbole. And then maybe you, we, in every school, most schools, you may have a very strict teacher. You can say the whole J3 class stood still as Mrs. Negedu passes by. Of course, it's not possible. It, it, this class may not be actually still or stiff, but just to, for that effect to be felt, to paint a picture. Or you could say the whole world stood still as Mrs. Negedu passed by. That's hyperbole. Mm -hmm. And um, other forms. So I'm still coming back to you, Divine. I'm sure my audience, um, my young learners, you're already composing your hyperbole. Unfortunately, I cannot listen. I can hear you. I can't hear you. But I, I can hear Divine. So Divine, give me a sentence of... Hyperbole. An example of a hyperbole is 
I'm so thirsty. I could finish a drum of water. Awesome. <laughs> I can't imagine you finishing a drum of water, though. But well, you see, that is the effect of hyperbole that we're talking about. Exaggeration. Okay? Good. We'll touch one or two more figures of speech. And we're going to have the personification. It's just like the name implies. Personification is the process of personifying, giving the quality of a person, of a human, to a non-human. The quality of a human, of a living thing, to something that is not living. For instance, if you say, the new moon smiled over the earth. Oh, the moon, only human beings have the capability to smile. Only a human can smile. A moon cannot smile. But you see, already a mental picture has been created. So we understand the shape of the moon at that very instant, by that sentence. Mm. We say, at the passing of the wind, the trees danced to the tune of the wind. So we know naturally when the wind is moving, when there's a movement of the wind, um, trees naturally shake. So but when you say a tree is dancing, it's only a human being that has the ability to dance. Okay? So that is what personification. That is personification. When you say the rain flogged my dad home yesterday. Ah, the rain can't flow. It's not a living thing. So the rain has been personified. Hmm? The rain has been personified. That is what examples of personification. The rain flogged my dad home yesterday. So let me give um, Divine, my audience, represented by Divine here, a chance to give a sentence that is personification in nature. So divine, give me a sentence that is personification. The sentence that is personification is the goat laughed at her tune. The goat laughed at the voice of her tune. Okay, so um, goats probably cannot laugh so well. We can take that as a personification. Well, our time is up and I would love to have you in our next episode. Don't miss it for anything. We'll see you next time. Bye.